Yeah, okay, Nation, so as you can see here, I've got my uh, Xmark Commercial 30 up on my uh, jungle uh, jack stand so I can do its uh, maintenance of cleaning out the deck. It's currently uh, May here, and uh, I always call this month Hell Week uh, because uh, the uh, sunshine and rain and uh, fertilizer and everything is just kind of working together right now. And most lawns are like six to eight inches here, and in the Pacific uh, North west uh you know that growth each week is uh, just absolutely crazy and it's always wet so uh, cleaning out the deck becomes a normal part of my day in uh you know trying to minimize clogging and stuff and i posted a picture of uh, me doing this last week and uh, somebody mentioned uh, removing the front baffle here uh, on uh, the Xmark Commercial 30 and that that would minimize uh, some of the uh, clogging here and it's something that they do all the time and he said it's just four bolts. So I was looking at it and you can see uh, the four bolts here and here on the sides and uh, looking at it underneath it kind of makes sense that that baffle there would be there for uh, the uh, mulching aspect of the mower to sort of uh, get those clippings to recirculate underneath whereas uh, when I'm banging you kind of want all those uh, clippings to flow uh, out uh, into the bag. So I'm going to clean out the deck here and then I'm going to remove that baffle and uh, run it for a day here in my lawn care business uh, and see uh, if it makes any difference. Okay, so I got uh, the deck relatively cleaned out there. You can see that top uh, baffle there that I'm talking about uh, that uh, was suggested uh, that I remove. I figure while I got it up here anyways, uh, that I'll take the blades off and give them a sharpen. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so I got the uh, blades sharp and ready to put back. And I've gone ahead and uh, kind of roughly cleaned up this area around the bolts so that uh, I can remove those four bolts there to remove that baffle. Okay, so as you can see there, I've got uh, that baffle off. You can see in that uh, area there is just those uh, four bolts to take off. You see a bit of a clean area because the grass uh, hasn't uh, gone into that area. It was protected by that baffle. Okay, so there's the baffle there. Uh, you can see uh, the bolts that were visible uh, on the outside of the mower. Uh, right there you're going to need to use a, a half inch open-ended wrench to be able to take those off uh, the top ones i was able to use a ratchet but uh, this uh, bar here across the front gets in the way of the ratchet so i had to use an open-ended wrench to get, be able to get those ones out and then on the back side of the baffle you've got some uh, hex uh, type uh, bolts there and those are uh, as you can see from here they're going to be packed with dirt and uh uh, grass and stuff in there so you're gonna have to uh, use a, a smaller uh, like little hex key in there to clean them out before you can get uh, the 3 16th uh, ended uh, one to fit in there properly uh, so that you can take it out as you can see there with it there it fits in there nicely once you get them all cleaned out. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain to reach under there and get that uh, cleaned out to be able to uh, take them off. So got uh, the blades back on it. No more front baffle. So we'll run it and see uh, how it does. So first lawn of the day. This one always gives me trouble on uh, Wednesday mornings. It's very uh, long and wet and lush. Keep an eye on the tires uh, as I mow it and you'll see uh, just how wet uh, the lawn is. Uh, this lawn usually I get through a couple of passes and uh, it starts to give me uh, trouble just because of how uh, thick and wet it always is week after week.
So it got about uh, halfway to three quarters of the way through the lawn before it started to uh, have issues clogging up. You can see just how tall and wet uh, the grass is there. Open it up and uh, you can see uh, the build up there in that chute area of uh, the mower. So only had about half a bag of grass in there. Take a look underneath. And you can see uh, quite a, a bit of space there. It's not completely clogged like it normally would be. And uh, the issue was just uh, the grass in the actual shoot area. Okay, so as you saw from that first lawn, particularly the uh, backyard there that I was showing, uh, very long, very wet, that yard doesn't get any fertilizer or anything. Um, it's really just a utility cut I come by every week. They've got a couple of dogs, uh, so I'm not sure. Usually uh, the lawns with dogs are pretty bad, uh, but with that one, it just grows like crazy. And ironically, it's the first lawn I do uh, every Wednesday. Uh, so it's quite the challenge because you start off with a clear deck normally and then and, uh, you know, it's usually uh, pretty packed with grass uh, by the end of just that first lawn. So uh, right away was able to get through a lot more of that lawn. Uh, got about uh, half to three quarters of the way through uh, before I had to stop uh, where I could feel uh, the mower and hear the mower struggling. Uh, and it was really just, uh, you know, after looking at that uh, footage there under the deck, it was still pretty wide open under the deck. Um, some buildup, of course, but still pretty wide open. It was the chute uh, that was uh, clogging up. Uh, so if that's sort of uh, the case or how it kind of continues the rest of the day, where it's basically just the chute that I'm having to clear, well, that's, you know, pretty easy. And then, of course, I'm knocking out uh, the grass uh, underneath the deck at the end of the lawn uh, just by bouncing the mower up and down uh, just to get whatever is loose to fall out because of course I don't want to track uh, anything along the sidewalks and stuff as I'm uh, leaving so I uh, will knock out anything that's loose uh, before I get to uh, you know go to the next house so we'll continue on throughout the day and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, second lawn of the day, and uh, surprisingly, it got through the entire lawn without having to stop. Uh, so, uh, very promising results. And at the end here, you need to get to the backyard. You can see the buildup of grass. Shoot, is starting to clog here. So, we'll pull that free. And then take a look underneath. So still, lots of uh, room in there. Doing pretty well. I'll uh, knock the grass loose so we can get to the backyard with minimal so because uh, these mowers can't be turned on their side because of the fuel venting system, this is typically how I will uh, get uh, that grass buildup uh, loose throughout the day. Just bounce it uh, up and down and uh, clean up the little piles of grass. Back. And you can see a bit of the grass that's there. So that's typically what I do to get the mower from the front yard to backyard or vice versa, just to minimize any clumps falling on paved surfaces or on gravel areas if you're having to go across gravel areas. Okay, last one of the day and it is struggling through it. It's so thick and lush. It's taking a while to mow it, but it's, uh, it's getting there. So I incorrectly said that the mower is struggling through it in that last clip. What I meant was that I'm struggling through it. Uh, I should really be using a much larger mower on this property. Uh, it's a, a bigger property, uh, but for reasons of root density and uh, just uh, finishing off in this neighborhood on a day where I'm using uh, the, the Commercial 30 on all of my other customer properties, uh, I save this one for the end and just get it done with the 30. And uh, it's just a bit of a struggle because of the amount of 
times I have to stop to empty the bag uh, of uh, grass just because of the size of the property. But uh, you can hear from the engine RPM that it's uh, doing uh, quite well with that uh, baffle removed uh, getting through uh, this uh, very uh, lush and thick lawn. So it's the end of a very long day. I think I got through about 12 lawns or so today. Uh, so I've got uh, the Xmark Commercial 30 up on the Jungle Jack. So let's take a look at it. So there you go. I got the uh, Commercial 30 propped up uh, using the uh, Jungle Jack. Let's take a look underneath and see uh, what it looks like after mowing uh, 12 really long lush lawns today with that uh, baffle removed. So there you go, actually uh, quite the difference. You can see this whole section here where that baffle would be. You see a little bit of grass up front there, but it's completely uh, empty there. That would be completely uh, clogged up and packed up on that side. On this side, we do have uh, some grass buildup, but again, uh, still nowhere near as bad as it would be. Like this is all hollow here, or this would be completely normally packed up and you wouldn't see any of that bare metal there uh, before. So definitely makes a significant difference uh, with that uh, front baffle piece removed. So there you go guys, absolutely makes a huge difference uh, removing that front baffle uh, if you're using the Xmark Commercial 30 for bagging lawns. Uh, you know, just a pretty significant difference. Uh, it doesn't get rid of, uh, you know, grass buildup under the lawn. I don't think anything will get rid of grass buildup under the lawn when it's wet and thick and lush uh, like uh, the lawns are right now. Uh, but it significantly reduces uh, the amount of buildup and makes it really a lot more manageable to get through uh, the day uh, bagging uh, those uh, really tough lawns uh, with the Commercial 30. So I'd say if you're using the Commercial 30 uh, exclusively for just mulching lawns, then of course uh, leave that baffle in there. That's what it's there for, uh, to isolate those two blades and to be able to uh, keep those uh, grass couplings circulating so that they're broken up uh, with the mulch blades. But if you're using the Commercial 30 for side discharging or for bagging lawns like I am, then absolutely uh, remove uh, that front baffle there. Uh, it'll make a huge difference in the performance of this particular mower.